Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84 and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about VCF Midwest, which took place in Elmhurst, Illinois last week. That is the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest for 2021. And my goodness, I had an amazing time. Not only did I meet a bunch of cool people, I saw a bunch of awesome things on display. I met some fans, which was always really cool. And I picked up some really cool stuff, not all of which is what is on the table now. So I'm going to be showing some photos and b-roll and some footage and stuff like that. I'm also going to put some links in the video description. A few of my friends who are on YouTube and social media posted some really cool pictures and videos. So I'm going to be linking down there. So be sure to check those out. Now, I've been going to some vintage computer meetups and events for quite a long time. However, this is the first one that I actually traveled a significant distance to. A lot of the ones that I've gone to were in the New York or New Jersey area. I've been to a few VCF events before, but this was the first time I was at VCF Midwest. And my goodness, was it awesome. I'm really looking forward to going back next year. And there is an upcoming New Jersey event, VCF East, coming up in October. Although they are different in size and scale and what they have to offer, I'm really excited to visit. A quick side note, I'll actually be at VCF East with a table alongside Sean of Action Retro and Mike of Mike's Mac Shack coming up in October 2021 here in New Jersey. So Google or do a web search for VCF East and you'll find out all the information on their website. I hope to see you there. But let's focus on VCF Midwest. First off, they put on an amazing show. It was free for attendees. You could just walk in there and see all this cool stuff. They had some auctions and donations that you could help out uh, with their activities and all the stuff that they do to put on the show. It's greatly appreciated. So if you have stuff that you're going to this event with and you ended up selling it or you don't want to bother selling it, well, you could just give it to them and they'll put it on the auction slate, which was really cool to see in action. They also had a few sessions with people who were attending. So this included guests like Clint of LGR, Ken of the Computer Clan, and David Murray from the 8-Bit Guy. It was really cool to see them in person, so I was geeking out about that. And it was really nice to have the discussions that they were having on these panels. People were asking questions about, you know, how do they get started with doing videos, what hurdles they've overcome, their different scheduling bits, and how people approach different videos. It was really cool to see how, you know, these were three people who do amazing work, and they all had their own work ethic, their own schedules, their own bits and pieces. So it was really cool to see that and learn a bit about each of their channels and how they approach things. My friend Ron of Ron's Computer Videos did a great walkthrough of the event while we were there and posted that to YouTube. I'll put a link in the video description and a link up here, but here's sort of an abridged version of my walkthrough. I took a lot of photos and videos after the event was sort of dying down at the end of the first day when I took a breather, but there's a lot of photos and other little snippets of video and stuff that I took during the event. So check those out. I'm going to put that here and I'll put some music over it and I'll comment when necessary.
So as you can see, there was quite a lot of cool things to see at this event. There was an Apple One. I never thought I'd see an Apple One in person. And that was just one of those things that this guy came on the second day and set it up. I don't think uh, it was there the previous day. So that was really neat to see. There were these people that set up this amazing Apple collection. It wasn't for sale, but it was just to look at. Uh, and then there was these other folks who set up all these vintage machines that I've never seen before. And they were showing them how they worked. And it was just so cool. And it's one of those things that was really fun to do in person and experience in person because you could look up photos and you could look up videos, but to be able to come up to these booths, talk to the people and hear how excited they are about these machines, well, that was really awesome. Before we get a look at some of the goodies I picked up here, I wanna give a huge thanks to all the people I met at the event. Ron of Ron's Computer Videos, Ryan, Steve, Steve, another Steve, Rick, Chris, Adam, Dave, all you folks were fantastic. It was great meeting you in person. I had some social media interactions with you guys, but it's always nice to put a face to the name. I also want to give a huge thanks to all my fans or anybody who recognized me and came up and said hello. I gave out a lot of these buttons. In fact, I'm running low on them. And it was great to take some selfies with people and just say hello. It's always great to meet people. And uh, I think I signed a few floppy disks, so that was exciting. If you have any photos of me and you or anything that I signed or anything cool that you want to share out from the event, feel free to tweet it at me uh, and maybe I'll retweet it or something like that. All right, so let's see what I picked up. First, I have some small items on the table. Not everything is here. I'm gonna be grabbing things and putting them on the table. And there are some things that were too big to bring home. We'll touch on that later. So first off, this is from the Free Pile. This is a copy of Ute Tower. And I didn't really have any knowledge of this game until Clint of LGR did a video about this game. And I'll put a link in the video description to that. But this is really cool. It's basically like a Sim Tower type game, uh, but it's for the Macintosh. And this is boxed. It's a little beat up. This was in the Free Pile, and I'll put a photo of the Free Pile on the screen now. And the Free Pile was essentially an area where you could dump off anything that you did not want to take home. And there were some rules to that, uh, but this was really cool. Uh, I thought that was a, a great pickup. And my friend uh, Ryan uh, was rummaging through the Free Pile, as we all were. We were all helping each other out there. And we found some pretty cool stuff. The next bit from the free pile is this <laughs> Macintosh PC Exchange, a boxed copy of Macintosh PC Exchange. This is a piece of software uh, that lets you use uh, MS-DOS uh, disks and files and such on your Macintosh. I did not have this. I didn't even know it came out in a box like this. So that is really cool. Um, I'm not sure what's inside. Actually, I didn't peek because it was flattened. Looks like there's some documentation. We'll find out now. Uh, oh, <laughs> we have a copy of the disk, so not the original one there. But that's pretty neat. Uh, we do have a packing list, so we know what was included in here. Uh, we have a disk, a manual, software registration card, and software licensing agreement. So we have the packing list. We have the licensing agreement. We'd like to hear from you from Apple. So that's the uh, registration card or whatever. And uh, so, okay. And then there's an advertisement for Mac Link Plus. So this will come in handy for a video. It says, now that you have the best utility for mounting PC disks, why not add the best utility from converting your PC files? And I always mix these two pieces of software up, uh, PC Exchange and Mac Link Plus. Um, but there, that sort of sums it up there. One is for disks and one is for software compatibility and converting files. So here's the user guide for it. Very cool. So all I'm missing is the original disk. And I might have that around there somewhere, but it's always cool to have the box. It is uh, folded. However, I think I could fold it back, put some cardboard in there. And that doesn't look too terrible. Uh, Clint of LGR did an excellent video about sort of rejuvenating these boxes like this. And I'll have to revisit that, but I think that's pretty neat. And I think that'll look cool maybe on the shelf here or a different part of my setup. Now, the very first thing I purchased was this. This is a little dot matrix Commodore printer. This is the MPS803. I'm not really too familiar with Commodore stuff. I do have a Commodore 64. And I believe I, it's a 128 model. I have a few Commodore things and disk drives and such. But this printer was just sitting there. It was $10. It's in pretty darn good condition. Uh, the seller said it worked. Uh, so thank you, Josh, for the pickup. I, I purchased a few things from their table. And it's just one of those things where it was tiny. Uh, I could fit it in my luggage, which I did. And uh, yeah, I didn't actually get any questions about this in my luggage. Uh, although they did have to uh, do an extra scan on my carry-on bag. But it, it wasn't for this piece that they were interested in. I'll show you the piece that they were interested in in a moment. But uh, they said it worked, and uh, I'll have to play around with this when I get to my Commodore stuff. But I have a sort of a weird fascination with old printers, and it's just so tiny, so why not? 
Now, I didn't expect there to be a lot of Apple stuff at the event, and there was a lot of PC stuff, but there were a few tables that had Apple or Macintosh stuff, which I was really excited about. This one seller had a bin of PCI cards, so I started rummaging through them. I did find a really cool SCSI card, and I think there was a network switch card. Uh, I think it came in, uh, or it was similar to the one that came in the Power Macintosh G3 and G4 servers, but I missed out on those. Somebody had purchased them by the time I got back to the table, but I did pick up some pretty cool cards. So I'm going to put them on the table here and then we'll take a look. First, I'd like to mention this Mac Pro RAID card. My good friend Ryan, or Mr. Macintosh on YouTube, gave this to me. I think it's going to be really cool. I will put this in one of my Mac Pros and we'll see what we can do with it. The older cards, and obviously that's the newer one here, um, we have a ATI Radeon card. I'm not sure exactly what model this is. I'm sure everybody in the comment section will tell me. Uh, the model number is R6SG32M, so I believe this is a 32 megabyte Radeon card. Not sure if it's a Radeon like 7000 or if it's just a Radeon. It's not the DDR model, but I have two of them. So it was not a bad price. These cards range from 10 to $20 each, uh, the ones that I picked up here. And so I figured, why not? If it says it's for Mac, it has DVI, has VGA. So I thought that was a good pickup. Uh, this is just your standard uh, ATI Rage card. This is actually a Rage 2 Plus DVD. Now it does have these little pins here. Um, I think you were able to put a decoder on here for the DVD uh, module functionality, whatever you want to call it, whatever the word is, or uh, memory expansion. So I don't know if this has that built in. With my luck, it probably doesn't, but it's cool to have this card. Has the DB15 on here and VGA. So good for a Macintosh. We do have some non-video cards here. This is a Firewire USB card. This is a Mac Alley branded one. It's nice. I always like the, the red PCB board on this, so I think that's pretty neat. Uh, not sure if that's USB 2.0, which is why I picked up this card, because right on it, it says USB high speed. This is an Adaptec AUA3020 Firewire USB combo card. What's nice about these is you get Firewire connectivity and USB connectivity on one card. So if you have a beige power Mac, let's say like this Molar Mac here or anything like that, and you want to add this functionality, you're only taking up one PCI card slot, not two. And then I picked up this. This is an ATI 3D Rage Pro uh, 2X card. And it says AGP on there, but I think this is PCI. I'm sure that's just what the chip is called. Uh, it does have memory expansion. There's a four megabyte module in there. So I'm not sure how much this can take, but I believe this has a six megs total because there's a few memory chips on there already. Or I could be wrong. Maybe this is maxed out to eight, but uh, I think this is pretty cool. Again, DB15, uh, Macintosh connector and uh, VGA. Um, so you do have some options there, which is pretty nice, but I have a lot of Nubus video cards, but not a lot of PCI ones. So I was very keen to pick these up and make sure that I have plenty of cards when I'm tinkering around with my Macs and making sure I could get the best video performance out of them. I also picked up this super cool Macintosh Voodoo 5 card. I didn't have one of these. I believe this is the last Voodoo card that was officially released. It is the PCI version, so it's not the faster AGP version, but that's what I'm interested in. I want to put it in one of my beige Macs and see how it performs. I'm not even sure much about these cards. It was just on the table. I was buying these cards from the gentleman and I asked what the price was on that card and he gave me a very good deal. So I thought, you know what? Why not? It'll make for some good content. And look at the size of this thing. It's neat. It comes with the books, the CDs. That's going to be nice to play around with. I can't wait to check that out. I also picked up these two Matrox PC cards. They are PCI, I believe. Uh, they were only $3 each. The proceeds uh, from this garage sale table thing that they had at VCF went directly to the folks that put on the event. So I felt obligated to buy some things. And these are just PC cards. They have VGA and DVI. I think they're pretty cool. I'm going to give one to my friend Mike. He likes PC stuff. And I'm going to stick around with one. I know they're not the best, apparently, but for $3, how could you go wrong? Okay, so... <laughs> quite a lot of things in this box. Uh, I'll address this first because it is out of the box. This is a system saver for the Apple 2GS computer. It basically sits on top of the computer and then you put the monitor on top or whatever and it has a little fan in here. And basically it's just a power strip, look at that, uh, with a few buttons on the front and a fan. I always wanted one of these. I came across a guy who had two of them. They were $10 each. So I bought both of them. And like a few minutes later, I ran into my friend Ryan and he was looking for one. So I gave him the other one. Great price and happy to have it in my collection. All right, let's see what's in this box. First off, we have two items that were generously donated from VCF. 
thank you very much for assisting me in looking for some parts like this. So they basically had a bin of Mac stuff, and these are parts and things like that that they take out of their machines to help service them and fix them up and whatever. And this is a Zip drive. I thought this was a Zip 100. It's actually a Zip 250 drive. Now it is IDE, but what I was interested about is this bracket. It has a cutout right there. Looks very appropriate to put in a Macintosh clone, so I'll be excited to play around with that. And the whole reason I knew about this section was from Ron. Uh, Ron was like, hey, there's a bunch of Mac stuff over here. We thought it was for sale, but it was basically like their stash of parts. And this is a Macintosh 2SI board, and it says bad on it with the date of October 13th, 2019. So this board has some issues, not exactly sure what's going on with it. It does look pretty okay. There are some areas, obviously, because it still has the original caps on it, that are problematic. But I hopefully can take a look at this board and get it working. I'm currently having an issue with my 2SI, where even if a floppy drive uh, is not connected to it, it says there's a bad disk in there. So a little bit confusing, maybe a bad resistor pack or something like that. Definitely we'll take a look at that and maybe I could use this for some spare parts. The same person who had the system saver had this book. This is Programmers at Work. It's a set of interviews uh, by Microsoft Press. Uh, I think I got the book for about $5, not bad because this is going for quite a bit more uh, secondhand. Uh, Andy Hertzfeld is in it. We have a bunch of other people from other popular tech companies, Jeff Raskin, uh, Bill Gates is even in here. So very cool stuff. Uh, I always like reading these things and there's a bunch of sketches and examples of these folks. So uh, that was a cool pickup and something I will cherish in my collection. Uh, that same person also had some zip disks, and I would have passed by it, but they're in this lovely little carrier, and I don't know. One of them was sealed, and it's even a Macintosh formatted disk. Help if I held that the right way up. So that's pretty neat. Um, I do like these little holders, and there are other disks too. They're not sealed, but hey, for five bucks or whatever I paid for it, not a bad deal. Next, I have the item that caused my luggage uh, to be looked at by the TSA, and that is this. Uh, they put my bag aside and looked at it through uh, one of the scanners and they did whatever by hand and opened it up and they were after this. <laughs> this is a roll of paper for Apple's silent type printer and uh, I actually thought that this roll went for the printer I have right here but actually it's different. However, it's really cool to have this as a little bit of a prop. I think it was like 10 or 15 dollars or something like that so not too expensive. It's still sealed. Uh, I think any normal paper would work uh, any thermal paper rather would work for this particular printer. Um, but you know what? It's thermal paper. It has a little Apple logo on it. It's pretty early day stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. And the guy with the 2GS system saver had more goodies. This is a 800K drive for an Apple II or a Macintosh. If I could untangle the cable here, there we go. Pretty good condition. Apple 3.5 inch drive model A9M0106 still has the little sticker on the end of the cable here. So I think that's really cool. And uh, the pass-through uh, block out there is removed. So this was probably used on an Apple II. The guy also had uh, some duo disc drives. So that's the drive that has two disc drives in there. And uh, my friend Adam picked that up. So good, good score for Adam. And what else did I get from that same individual? I forget what's in here. Oh, that's for later. Oh yeah, this person had some cool discs. So we're gonna go through those in a second. So this guy had some software and disks at the table too. So let's take a look. This is a set of system disks. I believe this is for an iMac. Always like looking at these and always like picking these up because you never know if you're gonna get a different version or a different set of disks. Uh, so yeah, Mac OS 10 install. We have, yeah, Mac OS 9 install here. So these are the disks that are included here. And then there's a bunch of, uh, I think there's a series of six total disks for a restore that gave you the software and the games and whatever that came with your iMac when you purchased it. So that's very cool to pick up. Uh, they also had some floppies there. Uh, this is a set of Macintosh system software disks. Uh, this is version 6.0.5 with the date of 1990 on it. So a set of four disks or, yeah, four disks here. So that was cool to pick up. Also, somebody uh, came across me in the parking lot and said, do you want any CD cases? Hard to say no to that. So a bunch of blank CD cases. I'm surprised that they didn't get destroyed entirely in my luggage. Uh, some are not in the best shape, but I could always use like the cover or the backing uh, for other discs and to uh, fix up some more prized things like this one we'll look at in a second. And yeah, so it never hurts to have some extra discs. Uh, here's some more floppies from that gentleman. Uh, Mac OS 7.5 and Apple Disk Tools Boot 1.3. So there you go. 
Uh, these are separate. We'll go over those in a second. These are some more empty disc cases. Here's another floppy from that individual. APS PT 4.1. No clue what that is. All right, and then Snow Leopard. This is the non-server version. I seem to have a plethora of the server version, so I picked up uh, the non-server version again from the guy uh, with the Apple II stuff. Now, these next three CDs were given to me by Adam. He donated them to the channel. I believe he uh, already imaged them, but uh, this is the crown jewel of it. We'll get to that in a second. So we have a disc here that's called Funny, Just Jokes, Just for Laughs by Warner Media. Uh, this is a CD that's uh, QuickTime enabled, 1992. Uh, that's what that is, is that's not archived. I'll be archiving that. Uh, we have a copy of LucasArts The Dig. Very cool game. I don't think I've ever gotten into this one, but the CD is here, so I have my chance to do that. Very cool. And I've saved the best for last. This is a Daystar Digital promotional CD-ROM. And not only does this have cool things on it, it's a product reference notebook on a CD-ROM. So it's like a press kit type thing. Um, the interface on the back of this is just silly. I'll get a close-up of this, but you could just tell this was made in the 1990s. You got some little QuickTime videos there. You got this wonderful little UI. And what's cool about this is it lists the products that it talks about on the back. So we have the Power Pro 601. You may be familiar with that Power Pro 601 card. If you saw Sean of Action Retro's video about his upgrade for his Quadra 700, or the video I made about me fixing that card for his Quadra 700. I will be archiving this if it has not been archived already. We have the disc here, has a copyright date of 1994, and of course the booklet, which want to escape. But all of this will be archived. A big thanks to Adam for donating this to the channel. I am very, very happy to make sure that these things are properly archived and preserved so others can enjoy them. This I also picked up from the garage sale table that benefited the VCF folks. This is just a standard Netgear switch. It does 10, 100 megabit, $5, brand new in the box. Um, didn't get too beat up uh, while it was in my suitcase. What's cool about this is a lot of older Macintosh systems don't really know how to properly talk to gigabit networks. So it's nice to have a standalone switch that could just hub those machines together and let them be on the same network rather than worrying about if there's gonna be a handshake or anything uh, with a gigabit switch. Now you could have managed switches which you could designate the speed on it and sometimes that helps. But for $5, brand new in the box, I thought this was a cool pickup and it's vintage and it looks cool and everything like that, so why not? I just remembered, I put a CD in here. So this came from uh, the stack of discs and stuff that I got from uh, the same guy who had the Apple II stuff. This is a copy of Mac OS 7.6 on CD. I used to have a copy, but it was cracked. So very cool to have this. This was in the stack of discs that I got. So always happy to add an original media disc to my collection. Oh boy. We got a big bag of beans. No, no. This is a bag of cables. So the story behind this is I was at the same gentleman's table who had the cool Apple II GS system saver and stuff, and he had a box of Apple cables, mice, networking adapters, and so on. And so the seller was not at the table, and this box was previously hidden by a lid of a computer, so nobody was really looking at it to my knowledge. So I walked by with my friend Ryan, and we were just looking at what was in the box, and we're like, oh wow, this is some great stuff, I wonder you know, if it's for sale and what the price is and stuff like that. So we found out it was the same guy's table who we were already dealing with, but they had walked away. They either went to an event or they went to lunch or were doing whatever. And so we patiently waited around like vultures for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. And I picked up this whole bag of goodies, minus a few things that are no longer in here because I gave them to Ryan and a few of my other friends uh, for $50. And I think you'll agree that that was a pretty good pickup. So let's see what's inside this bag. So we have one ADB mouse, another ADB mouse, another ADB mouse. You know what? Let's just put everything on the table. Now that's what I call a bag of wires. So we have a bunch of goodies on here. One thing that was not part of this deal was this Asante talk adapter. And my very good friend Steve said I could have this. I was very excited because I have one of these, but it's always plugged into one of the machines that I have. And he was selling this for about $20. We struck up a conversation. He let me have it. Very, very excited to play around with this. Thank you so much, Steve, for the great offer. And that will be seen, I'm sure, in one of my upcoming videos. In fact, I did play around with that a little bit in my iMac video where I talked about uh, adapters and things like that. So I'll put a link in the video description to that. But back to this heap of wires here. We have a bunch of goodies here, so let's dive in. 
We have a DB15 to HDI25 adapter. So for your uh, Performas or 6100 models or whatever you have in there, that's a good pickup. Uh, we also have, my goodness, it's gonna take a while to go through, but uh, go through it quickly. So we have a, a SCSI Terminator, put that back in the box. Um, we have a bunch, and I mean a bunch of these phone net adapters. Not that I need all of these, but it's good to have a few. Uh, so these are uh, adapters that adapt your serial port to a phone net adapter, similar to Apple's local talk cabling system. Um, but Farallon made these, so different company. Uh, there is a little Ziploc bag somewhere here, or maybe it's in another bag that actually has the little terminators because you did have to terminate these if you weren't using both ports, and that's somewhere among here. But uh, yeah, these just use standard uh, RJ11 phone connectors. There we go. And then you can make your network with simple phone cable. And what's really cool about that is if your phone line is set up in a certain way and these cables were four line cables, you could actually use the two inner lines or the outer lines or whatever it is of the cable without interrupting your phone system. So a lot of businesses use these adapters because it was easy to implement into their wiring that was already in their building. Uh, a another <laughs> video cable for an Apple IIGS monitor. And uh, now we're just down to some mice here, uh, which I'll go over in a moment. Um, let's see if there's anything else hiding here. Another video cable for a 2GS. Uh, we have a, looks like a, a floppy cable. Yeah, that, that IDE one may have actually been a floppy cable. And yeah, now we're just left with mice. But this is the reason why I picked this box up. I wasn't really interested in the ADB mice, but for those of you with keen eyes, you can notice that they're not all ADB mice on this table. We have some original Macintosh mice here. So this is the original mouse that would have shipped with, let's say, 128K, 512K, or a Macintosh Plus. The coloring varies on them. Uh, there's a few in here. We have one that's completely beige. I don't know if this is particularly like an Apple II mouse. Uh, there's always some contention between fans of which mouse came with what. Uh, this one is model M0100. This is more of a platinum color. This probably came with the Mac Plus. This is model uh, A2M2070, but it might have came with the Apple II. Not sure. Excellent shape. Don't know if they work, but uh, the guys seem to have some pretty good deals. Uh, so why the heck not? And uh, some Apple Pro mice here. So we have both the white one that came with the iMax and the black one that came with some of the Power Max. And there's a, yeah, yeah, there's even a Mighty Mouse thrown in here too for good measure. So yeah, a bunch of cables, bunch of mice. Could not say no, especially because these mice here can go for anywhere from like 20 to $30 or even higher than that. So I thought that was a good pickup. Now it might be difficult for you to see some of the items are gonna show up, so I'll do a close up shot. But this is uh, my Apple Newton 2100 that I brought with me. And what I did was I had people sign it during the event. No, not on the device, but electronically because it's a personal digital assistant. So I'm gonna show you the signatures that I collected. I got Clint from LGR, I got the 8-Bit guy, I got Ken from the Computer Clan, I got Brent. Uh, a lot of cool people signed this, so I was very happy to think of that and bring it along with me. And I think it was really cool. People loved using the little Newton and writing a little bit with it. I also picked up some pins and stickers and stuff from people that people were selling or giving away. And I wanna show a close up of those here. I was walking around handing out my swag, so it was cool to receive some in return. Here's one thing that I want to mention. I printed out a greeting card for Clint of LGR because he just did a video on Print Shop Deluxe and I wanted to show him how much I appreciated that video. So I printed out a little greeting card for him. Uh, this one, of course, has a cool crab on it, but uh, the tractor feed paper, this was the last page, the printer, so it sort of got screwed up. I gave him the one that was in much better shape. And I printed out a little title card for Ron of Ron's computer videos, so hope to see that in one of his videos soon. I also picked up a copy of David Murray's Attack of the Pesky Robots. Uh, this was really cool because it's in the box and everything, and I like old software. I don't have a lot of boxed Apple II stuff at all, so this will be fun to have in the collection. And yes, this is the Apple II version of that. And I also got a signed printout from LGR's Dot Matrix printer. So I thought that was really cool. Look at that. So this will be fun to, to hang up or put somewhere. Uh, I love Dot Matrix printers. I love the guy's content. So it was a match made in heaven. But wait, there's more. In fact, there's so much more, I'll need to share it in another video. I want to talk more about the cool items I saw on display, share some of the talks I had with people about their collection, and reveal the large items that were too big for me to fly home with. So stay tuned for that. 
So I think you could clearly see that I had a lot of fun at VCF Midwest. I hope to go back next year. And don't forget, I will be at VCF East, which is a lot closer. So I'll be bringing some of my collection there to show off and I'll be with Sean and Mike. So that'll be a lot of fun. If you like these sorts of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that like button as well. And if you want to support me on Patreon and support my archiving efforts and my tinkering around and stuff like that, you go to patreon.com forward slash Mac 84. That's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac 84.